Did you know that asthma is the most chronic illness in children? Welcome to today's episode of Today's Parent where we are going to empower you on matters asthma. We have Dr. Jane Mate who is going to take us through what asthma is and how we can cope as children. Today's Parent is about connecting you with experts so you can learn from doctors like Dr. Jane Mate and providing you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier. Welcome to today's show. Dr. Jane. Yes. A real pleasure to have you on this show. Thank you so much for having me. What is asthma? So, like you correctly said, asthma is a chronic inflammatory airway disease. Right. So basically what that means is um, your airway is from um, your nostrils mouth all the way down to your lungs. Okay. And then you have these small, let them, let's call them pipes or tubes that move air in and out of your lungs. So usually when you have asthma, that is where the issue herein lies, okay. is you have chronic inflammation or recurrent inflammation of these pipes that help to transport oxygen in and out of your lungs. Right, so it's an illness that affects the airways then goes up to the lungs. Yes, predominantly the, the tubes in the lungs. The, the tubes in the lungs. Yes, the bronchioles in the lungs are okay. what are affected okay. when you have asthma. Dr. Ri, I know there's a mom or dad who's gone to the hospital and they've been told that their child has bronchitis. What's the difference between the difference between asthma and bronchitis? So for children, it's actually called bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis? Yes. So there's a difference between bronchiolitis and a difference between asthma. Asthma, we said it's more of a chronic illness. So you find that this is an illness that might start around the school going age and might go all the way into teenagehood or adulthood. Okay. Bronchiolitis, on the other side, is a, um, is a disease that affects predominantly children below one year, uh, usually caused by a viral infection or triggered by a viral infection. Right. The difference or the confusion comes in in that the symptoms of bronchiolitis are very similar to the to symptoms asthma. of asthma. For example, wheezing. So if you find an infant that is a child below one year who comes in with wheezing and difficulty in breathing, usually preceded by a runny nose, a bit of a cough, mm -hmm. most likely that child is having bronchiolitis, secondary to a viral infection. Okay. It's usually, it's usually very short term and uh, resolves on its own because I said it's a viral infection. Unlike asthma, which you find that is recurrent, yeah. is associated with certain triggers, whether it's change in temperature, whether it's dust, uh, environmental pollutants, such as smoke, okay. um, chemicals, perfumes. There's usually a wide array uh, of triggers that causes asthma. Okay. And for majority of patients, there is a genetic predisposition when it comes to asthma, unlike something like bronchiolitis. All right, so take us through what what causes asthma okay. what causes asthma so asthma doesn't have a cause per se or let me say we haven't identified a cause per se like i said there is a genetic predisposition so this means that usually asthma will run in certain families so number one your genetics plays plays a role yes genetics plays a role so when i say it runs in certain families it means you can pass on predisposition to asthma and then you have environmental factors, like I said, they're triggers. Or um, they're also something, what, what are called risk factors, mm -hmm. uh, which will determine or will make a child more predisposed to things like asthma. So these are like exposure to cigarette smoke when a mother is pregnant, or during the first year of life will actually predispose a child is it? to asthma. Exactly. And then if you have a um, child who's born premature, they are at a much higher risk of uh, getting a chronic illness like asthma, or a child who's born low birth weight can be at a higher risk of getting uh, something like asthma or chronic illness. So those are risk factors. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you have the genetic predisposition and the environmental factors coming together to cause the symptoms you get in asthma. You know, you've mentioned at the beginning that uh, children as low, babies as low as one year. Yes can have that wheezing. Yes. That can be very scary for a parent. Very scary. In fact, most of the time, they will come and tell you, my child is not breathing or my child has this sound. Because, especially for new parents, they wouldn't really know what a wheeze is. But they are able to describe or to mimic what their baby is having. And you can imagine if your baby is sleeping and suddenly you start hearing this whistling sound when they're breathing and you're like, what is happening? It's quite a scary experience. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know, this, this topic is very dear to me today because... 
I happen to be asthmatic. Oh, wow. And I am lucky to have known that my grandmother is asthmatic. Uh -huh. And uh, she lived to around 95 years of age. Mm -hmm. And for a parent who's watching, you know, it can be something that is so scary yes. to have your young child mm -hmm. missing out on so much. How mm -hmm. was your experience as a child? By class, by around class four, mm -hmm. by class four, I could tell there was something that was off. Mm -hmm. Participating in sports, of course, was nearly impossible. You're always put aside. Mm -hmm. And then when the weather changes, even now, when the weather changes, even a slight drop in temperature, yes. I'll automatically get an attack. Okay. If I pass particular trees, uh, trees I will get an attack. Uh -huh. Particular perfumes, I'll get an attack. And I think the one thing it would be important to mention for adults especially, mm. the work environment could be something that could be causing you, could be a trigger, yes. you know, stress-related asthma. Exactly. Even so, yeah. the home environment, because like what you've mentioned, is essentially called identifying your triggers. Yeah. So with asthma, when it comes to teaching children and adults how to manage the asthma, the first thing that we do is you need to identify your triggers. Yes. And like you rightly mentioned, you have triggers from weather to strong perfumes yeah. or chemical smells. And like you even mentioned, the home environment yeah. can be a risk factor for you because of things like mold, because of carpets. Nowadays, everybody has carpets in their house, wall to wall. They hold dust. They hold dust mites which are triggers for most people with asthma. Children and pets, how many people have you seen with cats ah. and dogs and parrots? So cats I've never noticed around feathers. cats and dogs, so I'm lucky. <laughs> exactly. I'm lucky when it comes to that. So identifying triggers is one of the ways that we use to manage asthma. So it will be children. important for a parent to know what the triggers are. Yes. You've mentioned smoke, you've mentioned the weather. Yes. Of course, genetics play a role, that's the base of it. That's true. Yeah. And you also have infections. This is what most parents usually don't consider, especially for children when you're having this seasonal kind of flu. Especially July. Especially July yes. when you're having colder weather. Even now we're having a rainy season. So the child starts with just a normal runny nose, a bit of a cough here and there. But respiratory infections, especially viral infections, are the biggest triggers to asthma okay. where you find now a child goes into what you call an asthmatic attack. Talking about an asthmatic uh, attack, Dr. Ari, yes. take us through for a parent who doesn't know what asthma is, okay. how it occurs, because okay. for some of us who experience it almost on a daily basis and okay. to the people around us, yes. it can be very, very scary, okay. but it is manageable. Okay. So take, take us through to a parent who's watching how an asthma attack starts and how it, you know, it escalates. Okay. So I'll give you a brief uh, background on the pathology or how your airway is built. So you're an asthmatic. Yes. I'm not. So our airways, when you have inflammation, inflammation is one of the ways the body's immune system protects the body. Right. When there's an infection, when there is an external trigger, the body identifies it and it causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. So with inflammation, if you have an airway, let's assume the airway is a pipe. Okay. So when you're having inflammation, you have thickening of this pipe. These are the steps of inflammation. The pipe thickens a bit. And then what happens is you have mucus being produced during inflammation. Yeah. So you have mucus production, which is part of the inflammation. And in some cases, you have the muscles around that pipe. This is your airway that we're using as a pipe. They tighten. As they tighten, what happens is the airway narrows. Yes? This happens for every individual, asthmatic or not asthmatic. Mm -hmm. You're having an inflammatory process. That is what happens. Now, in as asthmatic... This process of inflammation is exaggerated or you are more sensitive to the process of inflammation than I am or your airways are more sensitive to the process of inflammation than mine are. Right. So what happens is when you get any triggers, let's say for example you get a flu and your body starts to identify the infection and it produces some inflammation because your body is uh, responding to an infection. So this is your airway, you get an infection, mm -hmm. you have mucus. So imagine you have a coat of mucus which has already narrowed your airway and then the muscles around it oh, start no. to tighten and then they start to thicken. So that makes it worse. So this now becomes your airway for something like this. So you have narrowing of the airway. So what happens is when you're trying to breathe, you're breathing through a more narrowed airway than I am. So you're going to have difficulty in breathing, which is one of the major signs of asthma. So yeah. difficulty in breathing, one of the ways for parents to identify is, for example, if your child is not able to complete a sentence. So it will be like, my name is Jane. 
it's a struggle. You know, it reminds, it reminds me when I go to the hospital and when, when you go for, to the triad stage, yes. and of course the nurse, the nurse wants to take your, your vitals. It's such a waste of time. Mm -hmm. To you as an asthmatic, it's such a waste of time when they ask you these questions because your air, you are like on, on, uh, on limited air. Yeah, you don't to want to it. talk. Yes. Exactly. And you still have to just say your name and how you're feeling. Exactly. So it, that's one it, of the it's ways a struggle. that parents are able to identify. If you suddenly notice that my child is not able to make a complete sentence, he's breathless. That's one of the ways to tell. Then the second one, or the most common one that maybe people know is associated with asthmatics, is wheezing. So wheezing is a high-pitched whistling kind of sound. So the wheezing is from the, the airwaves tightening and becoming small. Yes, so your airway has narrowed and you have mucus there, so you're trying to breathe and there's turbulence of the air moving. You see, when your air is open, you breathe fine, <laughs> you can feel the air moving. But when it's like this, it's like trying to blow through a narrow stroke. Yes. You hear a whistle. <laughs> so it's the same thing. So I'll be... You know the fun thing, the fun thing of being an asthmatic, you think the person next to you cannot hear you wheezing. Oh, they can, they can. I'll show you they can. But it is there. Yes, it's called an audible wheeze. Oh my gosh. So you're sitting next to somebody and there's this whistling sound. The person is wheezing. What is it? Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> and you know you're not okay. Exactly. So there's that whistling sound, which right. is also very common. So if you hear your child whistling, please have them checked. It is not normal to have a wheeze or a child okay. who is wheezing. Okay. The other thing is a cough. You get, usually it tends to be a nocturnal cough. So you find daytime, your child is fine, but going into the evening when they're getting into bed, they have this persistent cough. Mm -hmm. It tends to be a dry cough. So most of the time you'll not have any mucus or phlegm coming out. It tends to be a dry cough and it is usually associated with a wheeze. So they'll cough and then when they breathe in and breathe out, now you can hear a wheeze. Right. So those are some of the symptoms to look out for. The other things now may happen in extreme, where now your child says they're having a tight chest. Yeah. But for the younger children, they might not really understand. So they might tell you, my chest is heavy. Or if you come to my office, some of the symptoms I will ask is, do you feel as if somebody is holding you tight yeah. and squeezing your chest? You can relate. Absolutely. <laughs> or you ask them, do you feel like somebody is sitting on your chest? And you know, you try to stretch, but you feel like there's something heavy on your chest. Exactly. So we ask them, if somebody sat on your chest, do you feel like somebody is sitting on your chest? Right. Or someone has put something heavy on your chest. So that's chest tightness and chest heaviness. Okay. So usually those are signs that you are going into an asthmatic attack. Right. There are other symptoms which now indicate that you're going into a severe asthmatic attack now where you're actually now struggling to breathe and you start getting head nodding, where you're using your neck muscles to breathe in. Sometimes you actually find some patients crouching because you're just trying to use as many muscles from your neck muscles to yeah. your chest muscles to breathe. Your heart rate goes up. Sometimes you'll come in sweating. You're in distress, basically. So if you notice a child like that and you can hear a wheeze, this is most likely a child who's having a severe asthmatic attack. Dr. Rihold, I thought you were going to take a break and then when we come back you'll help us understand more, okay. of course, about asthma and how we can manage and if at all treatment has been found. Definitely. We are going to take a short break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to today's episode of Today's Parent. We have Dr. Mate where we are talking about asthma. She's helping us understand what asthma is and if you have an asthmatic child, I know this episode is important for you to know how you can manage and get coping tips for you and your child. Dr. Ari, yes. we have a question that is coming from Anne. You had mentioned about you know, asthma flaring up at night mainly. Mm -hmm. So Anne's question is, why is asthma attacks worse at night? Okay. So you have different types of, uh, of asthma. You have what you're alluding to is called nocturnal asthma. So where you have more nighttime symptoms than mm -hmm. daytime symptoms. Okay. Um, it is thought, especially because of the temperature change, because I mentioned ah, temperature change right. is one of the triggers. Okay. okay. So at night you have a fall in the temperature. So you find that most kids will get the wheezing and the coughing mm -hmm. at night and early morning. There are other factors which might contribute to the night time, especially in children. 
because um, I don't know if you've heard about a condition called GAD, gastroesophageal reflux. No. Where some younger children may get reflux. Reflux, yes, I've heard of it. Yes. So what happens is if you have a child who has reflux, mm -hmm. at night they are asleep, so they are lying flat, which worsens reflux or will increase the symptoms of reflux. And reflux is one of the things that can predispose to the asthma symptoms. Okay. So you find that when a child is lying down, they reflux and it causes them to ah. cough and get a bit of the wheezing. Okay. So these are some of the things which are thought to make the symptoms of asthma worse at night and early morning, especially associated with children. Okay. The other type of asthma you have is exercise-induced asthma. <laughs> so you find you go for a jog, start wheezing. You run out of breath. Exactly. So that's another different type of asthma, which is usually associated now a bit more with the older children and the teenagers. Older children from what age? From about five years up to the age of 13 to 15. They may get exercise-induced asthma. And usually there is a study that has shown that it may be associated with poorly controlled asthma, which could happen around that age because this is the age you're trying to teach children about their triggers, their symptoms, and how to use the medication. So I don't know how your experience was <laughs> as a five-year-old trying to use your own inhaler and uh, how frequently you remembered to use it. Or did you mm. wait until your symptoms came and you're like, Allah, I was supposed to use my inhaler. So you have a lot more poorly controlled asthma That's associated true. around true. that age. Because most of the time it got to the point where I need to get it treated or managed after it has flared up and it's become worse. Exactly. You never used to think about it on the playground that you need to you know, go and take a puff or take a puff before you come out of the house. Exactly. No. Yes. No. So that's how they are associated with the older age group. You have more poorly controlled asthma. So, for example, if you're going for a sporting activity, you actually encourage the child to carry the inhaler with them, take it a few minutes before the exercise, and after, after. the exercise, just to manage the symptoms. Speaking of which, when you are having this conversation with kids, mm -hmm. you know, taking out your inhaler, I always say, like, if your famous rapper, for example, Nicki Minaj, takes mm -hmm. out her inhaler to puff before, during a concert, yes. you know, it, it just takes away something to do with your style. Mm -hmm. And kids are sensitive about, you know, opinions around them. Yes. Teenagers. Mm -hmm. How do we destigmatize mm -hmm. asthma and make it okay for kids to, you know, take out the inhalers mm -hmm. and puff mm -hmm. with no shame? Yes. And make the people around them understand. Yes. So like, uh, like you've mentioned, there are famous people throughout the world who've gone through this. And when you're talking to the child about um, the condition, you don't make it sound like it's this morbid illness that they have and they have to get through it. You tell them this is part of normal life. There are certain things that will make you have symptoms and this is how you can manage them. Yeah. If you manage them properly, there is nothing you can't do. And I've come to realize from my practice, children love a good challenge. So you're like you're a runner. If you use your medication properly, yeah. you can be the best runner in your school. You can be the best runner in the country. So it's about empowering them that this is not a handicap. That's true. It is something that has happened to you, but it is something that you can overcome. People ahead of you have overcome it. And the more you talk about it and you go to school and talk to the teachers, talk to the, the other students, and encourage them to be more of a community, that if you see so-and-so having these symptoms, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So that they also feel part of Absolutely. the community. Absolutely. As opposed to it being a stigma that you want to hide and take your inhaler in the corner because you don't want anybody else to know about it. Yeah. It's just a matter of telling them, you know, when you go for swimming, you teach the coach. When the child comes out from swimming, yeah. if he's an asthmatic, make sure he gets dressed very quickly because you do not want them to cool down. Mm -hmm. If you have some warm water, give them some warm water to take because that will help with their symptoms. Absolutely. So very simple things. If you teach children, they are more than happy to be part of the solution. Well put. Yes. Dr. Ali, uh, speaking of managing and treatment, mm -hmm. what options are there? Okay. So when it comes to management of asthma, there are quite a variety of options. Mm -hmm. So it's a stepwise management, depending on your symptoms. So we said there's mild to severe asthma, depending on what symptoms you have. Mm -hmm. So when I say stepwise management, you start with a very mild form of treatment and you progress depending on symptoms and how well your asthma is controlled. Or we reduce your treatment if your control is very good. So what I mean by that is the first step when it comes to medication, is you have inhalers, use of inhaled medication. So you have what are called reliever medications, 
which okay. basically so relieve you your symptoms. Type of, types of inhalers. Yes, you have different types of inhalers. You have reliever inhalers mm -hmm. and uh, controller. So reliever those are the two. And controller. Yes. I'm on two inhalers. Mm -hmm. The usual ventolin inhaler must be a reliever. Yes. And then I'm on a steroid foraling. Yes. So that must be the controller. Yeah, very good student. Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if you know about your asthma management. Clearly oh, you do. Yes. I've had to get there. Exactly. Get there. So your goal when it comes to asthma is one, you want to relieve any symptoms that are there. Okay. And two, you want to control and prevent any future symptoms. That is why you have those two categories. Okay. So like you rightly mentioned, the most common one, I guess, most mono is Ventolin. So Ventolin is a reliever medication. So reliever means it will relieve if you have any coughing, any wheezing, any chest tightness. Yeah. It's a medication you want to reach for because it's quick acting mm -hmm. and it's going to relieve those symptoms. Right. Because first thing, you want to relieve that discomfort that the child is having. Same way when you come to the hospital, if you're having a severe attack, Usually, I, you've heard about something called nebulization. I get nebulized all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be nebulized with a reliever medication. Ah. One now to relieve your symptoms and get you to a comfortable spot. Okay. When it comes to controller medication, it's a bit more involving in that we need to find out how frequent are your symptoms. Are you wheezing every day? Monday to Sunday, you're wheezing. Yeah. Are you wheezing more at night or during the day? Is this wheezing preventing you from taking part in day-to-day -day activities, mm -hmm. so much so that you cannot go out and play with your friends. Uh, are there any other associated symptoms? What is it that is causing you wheezing? Do you have a cut in the house mm -hmm. that is causing you to get these attacks? Do you have a carpet in the house that is causing you to get the attacks? Yeah. Because like I said, the second goal is you want to try and prevent uh, future symptoms or Absolutely. future attacks. Absolutely. So even before we come to the medication, because it's no use that I give you like the foralin and then you go back to your house where the cat is yeah. and it's still giving you the triggers. The same, same triggers there. Exactly. So one, identify the triggers and avoid them. Avoid the triggers. So, you know, what, mm -hmm. Sorry, Dr. Ari, what, what was a struggle for me when it came to avoiding, mm -hmm. one of the triggers for me was exercise. Yes. For then a doctor to tell you mm -hmm. if you're an active person to to avoid that particular trigger. Mm -hmm. It will be, it, it's a challenge. But the one thing I second that, that you've said, yes. it's important to get to a point where mm -hmm. if you can manage before, yes, like do your inhalers before yes. and after, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes it very easier to break the rule. Yes, <laughs> because like you said, if this is an active person and you're telling them do not exercise because you're an asthmatic, that will, that be, will be very difficult. Whereas you can tell them before you start a certain workout, you can take your medication, perform the workout, preferably not for prolonged periods of time. You can work out for half an hour. If you feel your symptoms are coming on, then you can take your medication. So that's a better way to put it, yeah. as opposed to completely avoid exercise. Absolutely. Which we don't encourage. We actually encourage people with asthma to, to be active. very active. Be active. You have to live a healthy, um, a healthy lifestyle. So that means you have to check your diet. It has to be a balanced diet. Physical exercise is actually encouraged. Because then there are other things which will worsen the asthma, things like obesity. That's true. So you want this person to be healthy. You do not want them to have a sedentary lifestyle. No. So the triggers we're talking about avoiding are simple things. You know, look out for any mold in your house. That's true. Uh, avoid Smoke, yes. You know, where people are smoking. Avoid cigarette Actually, smoking. My house because there was there was mold. Exactly. So that's true. And even that's in Kenya, true. things like jikos yes. and firewood and all that, because most people just assume it's cigarette smoking, but it's any kind of air pollution. So you want to avoid that. You want to avoid very strong perfumes uh, or chemicals. If somebody is painting a house, then you probably want to avoid that. Are there any food triggers? There are some people who have associated um, things like uh, gluten, but currently there are no, there are not enough studies okay. to support, to support uh, food triggers. All right. yeah. Dr. Mate, for any parent who wants to reach out and connect with you, mm -hmm. how can they contact you? So uh, I'm currently at MP Shah Hospital. I'm part of the pediatric team there. Uh, we run a clinic every day from Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So anytime you need any assistant, one of our pediatricians, including myself, will be there and we'll be able to attend to you in the pediatric outpatient clinic, which is on the first floor of the pediatric center. So that's how you can reach us and we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you, Dr. In today's episode, we had Dr. Jane Mate. We have covered asthma, sharing with you information of what asthma is, 
triggers to look out for and how to manage asthma in our children. I hope you found this show to be very informative and if you have a child who has asthma like me, please keep them active. Sports is one of the ways that they can use to manage their condition and continue to build their confidence to have a normal and healthy life. If you need any way to connect with Dr. Mate, for you to get more tips, please make sure you reach out to her. We've been here in studio at Little Creeps, the home of fun, exciting and durable kids furniture. And if you're looking for parenting resources, head on to www.supermamas.co.ke. It's been a pleasure having you. We thank you for your time. Goodbye.